Hi guys, good evening. Hi Alejandra. Hi coach. How are you? How was your day? It was really fun, but a little busy again. Because mm -hmm. my uncle has, I don't know what you, how can I say that, but he has his own business and I help him a little bit at the afternoon. So I was a little afternoon. busy. Yeah. Okay. For super. that reason. That's nice. Yeah. Well, I guess that's good to have a family business and that you were able to help out, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the family business about? He has like a, um, no sé dónde venden grano, but agencia. Mm -hmm. Like uh -huh. grains, like beans and, okay, they're called grains. Uh -huh, grains. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, like beans mm -hmm. and sugar and rice. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. So, uh -huh. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Great. And what about you? Super. I, I'm losing my voice since yesterday. I was coughing a lot. Um, and I feel mm -hmm. like I have that, you know, voice. <laughs> like if you, so I'm going to be doing that a lot. I'm sorry. Is that I'm, I just don't feel good. But here, super with a positive attitude is just the voice and my I have fever mm -hmm. but that's fine fever mm -hmm. doesn't affect me what affects but, me it's but you feel better not really I'm drinking peel so I feel like drowsy like uh, mm -hmm. but I, I just do not let me let it affect me so so yeah mm -hmm. so it's just uncomfortable mm -hmm. that if I I'm sorry if I do a lot the <clears throat> or if I cough a lot no. I'm sorry I hope so to feel better. Thank you. And, okay. okay. Thank you. Antonio, Samuel, and Brenda, good evening. How are you guys? Hi, I'm good. Hi, teacher. I'm pretty good. And you? Super. Here, recovering from this. I'm sexy and I know it voice that I have right now because of the, of, of the flu, but getting better. Thank mm -hmm. you for asking. Okay. <laughs> Samuel, good evening. How are you? Maybe he not, he's not connected yet. Okay, guys. So yesterday we started going into, or, you know, like a little overview about celebrations or different carnivals and festivals around the world. Do you remember some of the, some of the festivals we saw on that video yesterday? Do you guys remember? I don't remember the name, but it's about a colors, like a colors festival in mm -hmm. India. Okay, super. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? <clears throat> Do you guys remember there was an ice festival or a carnival? There was another one about in the middle of the desert where they had to... Uh, create figures out of wood and then when the figure was completed they would burn it up right yes okay super but today um i want to give you <clears throat> a little input or you know pod call it pop culture for you guys to know what a carnival is so we're gonna watch this small video where the word comes from and its origin and then we're gonna talk about famous carnivals around the world. And then we're gonna launch a little bit into weddings around the world too, because those are our two topics for today, carnivals and weddings. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, I'm going to show you this video really quick. I hope you learn, I'm gonna have questions for you at the end. So please t pay attention, okay? And enjoy, it's, it's fun. It's, it's good to always learn about this type of topics. Okay, so the video is called, I will set, share the link at the end of the class. Origins of the world's biggest party, the economist carnival. So what does carnival mean? And carnivals around the world, okay? So I think I didn't, I'm going to share the sound. I'm sorry, I'm going to share the sound. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> There you go.
Okay. From samba blocos in Brazil to masked balls in Italy, carnival is a truly global phenomenon, celebrated in over 50 countries around the world. Carnival originated as a pagan festival in ancient Egypt to usher out winter and celebrate the beginning of spring. When Alexander the Great conquered Egypt, the ancient Greeks adopted the festival. The Romans assimilated the festival from the Greeks, and it was later overlaid with Christian meaning to become the festival of Carnevale. The word carne means meat in Latin, and vale means farewell. In the Catholic calendar, Carnevale, farewell to meat, is a feast before the fast of Lent. In 18th century Italy, people preparing for Lent would throw indulgent fancy dress parties and gorge before the fast. As Christianity spread across Europe, so too did the celebration of carnival. Colonization exported it across the world. Portuguese colonists took Lent to the shores of Brazil, where they had also taken an estimated four million African slaves. Over time, European rituals fused with African ones to create Brazil's world-famous carnival. The flamboyant street parties are a celebration of Brazil's mixed heritage and its big business. In 2016, the city of Rio alone welcomed 1.1 million tourists during carnival, contributing around $900 million to the city's economy. On the Caribbean island of Trinidad, the Festival of Lent was introduced by French colonists. Slaves, excluded from these celebrations, created their own parties to the soundtrack of Calypso music, which mocked the French. This is now an integral part of Trinidad's carnival. In India, carnival is only celebrated in the southern state of Goa, where Portuguese colonists ruled for over four centuries. Parades occur throughout the state with bands, dances and floats. Carnival is known as Mardi Gras in the American city of New Orleans and contributes over 2% to the city's GDP. Carnival is not just a party in the sun. Quebec holds the third biggest carnival celebration in the world. From humble beginnings, Carnival has become a truly global celebration with millions of revelers all over the world contributing billions of dollars to the party. Okay, so tell me guys, what do you think about the video you just saw? I think it's very interesting, but I want you to give me facts and details and things that you learned from the video. Uh, well, it's a very uh, old tradition mm -hmm. with the regions in Egypt. Uh, you can see uh, festivals and carnivals uh, to be celebrated in in over uh, 15 countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I think that, that we review uh, one of the biggest uh, carnivals around the world. Okay, super. What does the word carnival mean? There's carnival, so it's it's separated. So do you remember the meaning of it? Yes, that uh, point was uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I uh, take my note about that. <laughs> okay. Carne, meat, and ball, farewell. Mm -hmm. yes, carn carnival. So yes. It started as a as a pagan uh, festival, meaning that because then again there was like no defined religion or not a lot of influence on religion in that moment. Reason why you would see on the movies like the Vikings and you know that type of movies where they have feasts of meat before, uh, well, when they have celebrations or when they have to honors after a ceremony, etc. So they have feasts of meat 
and before saying goodbye or before launching or going on a war. So that's why it means meet farewell because before they leave or before a new beginning to something different. So that's why they had this type of celebration, which later become into um, now that we have adopted the Christianity all over the world. So it, it the, like the the origin, the initial origin, it changed, right? So the tradition spread, but in a different context, more like to parties, more like to music influence, right? So it was a little bit different from its main origin, okay? So they spoke about several carnivals. Uh, Antonio mentioned one, which is well known, right? Like the Rio, Rio de Janeiro carnival. Then, but they mentioned others. Do you guys remember which other carnival they mentioned? <clears throat> uh, the Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. What is Mardi Gras? Well, I'm. I, uh, I mean, um, what do you guys know? Minneapolis. Um, it happens in New Orleans. Uh -huh. It happens in New Orleans. Uh -huh. But tell it. Okay. And I have a very cool fun fact from National Geographic that I want to share with you because I think yesterday we went over it, but then again, we just like, in a way, do not know its context or its origin or why do they celebrate Mardi Gras. Just to give you an insight, they wanted to imitate what they had in Rio but in this side of, you know, in, the Amer in North America, so they came up with Mardi Gras. But let me show you this video and tell me facts or things that you learned from National Geographic regarding Mardi Gras. Just give me a minute here. Here it is. It's just a very short video about Mardi Gras. New Orleans Mardi Gras is more than just a celebration before the Christian season of Lent begins. In this city, preparations for the big day begin weeks and even months in advance. Early mornings are nothing new for bakers, but the pre-dawn workload grows during carnival season. From January 6th through Fat Tuesday, New Orleans Cake Cafe and Bakery is a beehive of activity, where they make as many as 50 king cakes a day. Here, they make non-traditional goat cheese and apple stuffed cakes. There's very old school king cakes in New Orleans. They've been at it for 50, 60, 100 years, some of them, and they have a loyal following. The old school king cake has a tiny baby or other trinket baked inside, and whoever gets the trinket has obligations, such as buying next year's king cake. Here, the baby goes on the outside. The king cake is a traditional New Orleans Mardi Gras pastry. You'll find pastries like this all over the country and all over the world that they're only served for a certain season during the year. In another part of town, Sally Hedrick and her son are making 150 or more ornate costumes. These are for the social organizations throwing the lavish balls and parades. Some may go for more than $3,000. It's as rewarding to see the women in these costumes gleam, but it's more rewarding to see the men because a man doesn't get to dress up um, in beautiful clothes. He's usually in a tuxedo. Hedrick works on costumes year round, refurbishing ones that took a bit of a beating during last year's Mardi Gras celebrations and creating new works. For a look back at years past, the Louisiana State Museum lets visitors see more than a century and a half of New Orleans Mardi Gras traditions. The oldest item in the carnival collection is something that we were very fortunate to acquire just a couple of years ago. It's a ball invitation that dates to the 1850s. The carnival exhibit at the museum on Jackson Square only shows the tip of the iceberg. However, the museum's warehouse periodically offers tours, where visitors can see the thousands of costumes and other items. The way that we celebrate Mardi Gras now and for the last 150 years revolves around what we call the crew system. There are all these clubs that exist that are called Mardi Gras crews. All hail the king! For the dozens of crews, spelled with a K, lavish balls highlight Mardi Gras. 
the Knights of Sparta crew was founded in 1951. For the last 30 years, they've paraded in the city and currently host a masquerade ball and parade that falls on the next to the last weekend of carnival season. The crew's captain does not publicly reveal his identity. He says it isn't about secrecy. I wear the mask, however, because it is the tradition of carnival to mask, to hide one's identity, because when I represent my carnival crew, the Knights of Sparta, I am simply the captain. One should not know my name or who I am. Belonging to or leading a crew takes a big commitment. It is very costly to the members of the organization, paying dues, buying the trinkets, the throws as we call them, to throw off the floats, ball gowns for the ladies, uh, tickets to uh, different functions. And we do it because of a sense of tradition. As Fat Tuesday approaches, warehouses throughout the city come to life. Float dens, as they are called, house the floats that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to construct. It can take a month or more to build and decorate the elaborate floats, some of which date back to the early 1900s. It's part of the economy here, too. It puts a lot of people to work. I mean, you know, to make a float like this, you need carpenters, you, you need artists, you, you need welders, you need tire people, you need mechanics. It's a lot involved. And a final vital ingredient for Mardi Gras is the music. Grammy-winning artist Irvin Mayfield from television. You see these parades go by, people throwing beads, but what you really don't see is that Mardi Gras lives out in people's houses, it lives out on the streets, it lives out in the halls, in the parties, in the receptions, and it's not a thing over one day. Um, so I would say in terms of music, you know, it's very hard to have Mardi Gras without the music. And he says any musician growing up in New Orleans is shaped by Mardi Gras. You're a, a leg on a table that helps the table stand up, the music, the food, the people. For a young musician, you wouldn't start playing music because of Mardi Gras necessarily, but if you are a musician, you will be involved in Mardi Gras a certain way. Most New Orleans natives say anyone hoping to understand Mardi Gras needs to come back often and stay a while, not just for one day. Okay, so what can you tell me about, if you notice it's not Mardi Gras, it's Mardi Gras. So what can you tell me? What did you learn from this video about Mardi Gras? <clears throat> it's a great carnival. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a great carnival. When does it happen? At the beginning of the year, in the middle, at the end of the year? What do they do throughout the carnival? Uh, there are musicians and people, people uh, have a mask uh, um, uh, uh, in sometimes uh, uh, expensive mask and there are, uh, if I don't remember well, but uh, it's something like a cake, a king cake. If King cakes. Uh -huh. I don't remember. Um, this, these are very uh, similar, like the Mexican ones, right? There's like a tradition in Mexico also with the little baby, right? Like if you get the yeah. baby, then ah, uh -huh, it's pretty. It's very similar to that tradition, right? Oh, uh, right. Yeah, right. Okay, so they have music. People wear masks. Okay, so they are themed. So they have to wear gowns and they have to cover their identity because it's a carnival, right? So usually for carnivals, that's what happens. Um, the difference between, they try to imitate what happened down in South America to make it in North America, but what they wanted to give it a different look, meaning that that's the reason why they dress more like kings and queens, right? So that's why they wear masks and they usually have that Gatsby look to it right so it's very old-fashioned everything goes to like they were saying like 1800s 
when they found the first invitation to a ball before they were balls. That's how Mardi Gras started. But then they started going out to the streets and having parades. So those are, that's very, that's something very particular about carnivals, having a parade on the streets. And that's where they throw beads, which are the ones that you get at Dollar City, like the Carnavalito ones. So the Carnavalito comes from that tradition, from, a, from having <laughs> the beads and having all those accessories to make sound, right? And to be loud. So, um, so it's very interesting to get to know because actually after Brazil, Mardi Gras, it generates a lot of money to the U.S. because a lot of people travel around that time of the year to go to Mardi Gras, to experience that. So like they want to go to Rio, they also want to go to Mardi Gras. Actually, I was reading, doing my investigation that it, men's bucket list or part of their bucket list for the majority of men, like a 75%, I think it was, as part of their back bucket list was go to Mardi Gras to, you know, experience, you know, all the carnivals around the world. This Mardi Gras was one, Mardi Gras, a uh, Rio, and the one in Canada. I don't know if it's in Canada or in Alaska. I think it's in Canada, which is the ice carnival. In where we saw yesterday on the video that they had the you know, the castles made of ice and it's like a nice festival at night with a lot of neon lights. Okay, so that's really interesting about carnival. So now that we have a glimpse, a little bit of what carnival is, when did it start? It started in Egypt and then it started transitioning around the world once Christianity took place. Then we're gonna go now to our activity. I know you guys had problems doing the exercise. Remember that maybe the tool is not perfect and it might have a couple of glimpse glimpse or glitches um which are like little mistakes that it sometimes it will not take the answers like you would like to um but what i want you to do for those of you who have not done the activity i'm going to pair you up for a couple of minutes that way you do it together with a partner and then we're going to come back to just contrast the answers that way you get the right answers on the spot okay so i'm going to pair you up for for a couple of minutes just for you to work on this activity which is three point it's three point six and three point seven okay ah, three point six sorry it's three point six so i'll be back with you i'm just gonna pair you up on break rooms really quick <clears throat> Please accept the invitation right now. <clears throat> Size okay. 3.6, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so give me a minute because I'm going to enter to the... Okay. Uh -huh. sure. What did you find interesting about the video? Tell me, girls, while, she, while Ale is looking for the platform ex exercise. Uh, the last video. Uh -huh. which, which of the two did you find interesting and what information did you find interesting for yourself that you learned? Mm. Mm, something interesting it's about this is a tradition for a long time ago i really like that okay i would like to go there but <laughs> it's difficult because you know you need money to go there but it could be nice i know i would know. change to go there for example, Brazilian, I don't know how to say that, but I would like to go there. Mm -hmm. And to experience. Yeah. What yeah. They, yeah. I read a little bit about that information and it could be nice. Okay, super. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. so I'll be back with you girls, okay? Okay. 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 Genesis, my is the 
Ni es posible quitar la pelvis. Remember that it's exercise 3.6 on the platform, okay? Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, are you guys working on exercise 3.6? Uh, yes, yeah. we agreed to listen to the audio first, the whole audio, and then okay. to, uh, move move to the to the questions. Okay, super. What do you enjoy most about it? Can you hear the, the audio? Isn't that music fantastic? Yes. I, I, well, yes, we can. I have a bad connection with it, with my internet. Okay. Okay. Because... But you need to book a hotel room way in advance. No, it isn't. It's bad because. Really? Well, so waiting for the return to the class. So. But I can hear. So I have I have a problem about the platform today. So I can so the the answer. Yes. Actually I, I write uh, the teacher. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna then. do it. Hello, Hello teacher. <laughs> Don't worry. No, I know. And it's and it's not only you. In the past, I have okay. had students also that have, whether it's if you add two spaces or if there's no capital letter, if you're not using contraction, yes. usually the platform yes. is quite common at times, but don't worry, that's the reason why I like to do the exercises together, that way you guys know, right, if there's okay. something or not, so don't worry. Because gonna... I have zero, <laughs> mm -hmm. so, okay, okay. okay. We'll, we'll do it right now, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll check out uh, the other guy. So I'll, I'll I'll be back. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Are you guys done? Did you finish, Flor and someone? No. Okay, okay. I'll give you a couple more minutes. Don't worry. Cream. And, but it is funny. It is. I T apostrophe S. Ajá, es que así lo puse yo. A R T U. Okay, but I don't know. I couldn't mm. hear the video, but <clears throat> teacher, are you there? Yes, I am here. Uh, teacher. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why I can hear the. The audio. Mm -hmm. I need help because okay. I'm connected in my cell phone, mm -hmm. but I don't hear anything about it. Okay. And I 
we answer the questions and all of them are grown, but we're going to do what. the exercise. I think we're going to do the exercise together because a lot of you are having, I think it's more like an internet problem. Like the connection at night doesn't really help sometimes. Okay. For the audio, okay. but don't worry. I'll do it. We're going to do it together. I'm going to take you back to the main screen so we can do it together. Okay. 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 Super. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Okay, guys, so I know some of you are having a little bit of difficulty listening to the audio or completing the platform. The reason why I wanted us to do it together. Let me play the audio, pay close attention, and then we're going to do the exercise together, okay? Okay. Tell me if you're able to listen to it. Mike has just returned from Brazil. Listen to him talk about Carnival. Can you listen to it? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay, yes. super. Okay, perfect. Let's let's yeah. do it together. It's better. What did he enjoy most about it? Isn't that music fantastic? It's from a samba CD that I got when I was in Rio for Carnival. Wow. Carnival in Rio is really something. It's a party that lasts for four whole days. It's held in late February or early March, but you need to book a hotel room way in advance because hotels fill up really quickly. Carnival is celebrated all over Brazil, but the most famous party is in Rio. The whole city is decorated with colored lights and streamers. It's really beautiful. Everyone is very friendly, especially to visitors from other countries. The best part about Carnival is the big parade. The costumes are unbelievable. People work on them for months. It's really fantastic to watch. Everyone dances the samba in the streets. I'd really recommend you go to Rio for Carnival if you ever have the chance. Page 52, Exercise 5, Part B. Listen again and answer these questions. Isn't that music fantastic? It's from a samba CD that I got when I was in Rio for Carnival. Wow. Carnival in Rio is really something. It's a party that lasts for four whole days. It's held in late February or early March, but you need to book a hotel room way in advance because hotels fill up really quickly. Carnival is celebrated all over Brazil, but the most famous party is in Rio. The whole city is decorated with colored lights and streamers. It's really beautiful. Everyone is very friendly, especially to visitors from other countries. The best part about Carnival is the big parade. The costumes are unbelievable. People work on them for months. It's really fantastic to watch. Everyone dances the samba in the streets. I'd really recommend you go to Rio for Carnival if you ever have the chance. Okay, so now let's do the exercise together. What is the, I was telling the rest of the guys that um, sometimes the, the platform has, not that it has a couple of glitches, but it might have, if you have double space or no contractions or no period or no capital letters, sometimes it will give you a, a little bit of problem. Okay, so let's do it together. I will share the answers because maybe you had the right answers. It's just that maybe the way you were structuring it or writing it was not what the platform was asking for. Okay, so the first one is, what is a carnival? So the possible answers are, it is a party, or just the word party, or the third option would be, carnival is a party. Let's try one of those for number one. For number two, how long does it last? Your possible answers are, it lasts, four whole days in letters, if you see, no numbers. It lasts for four days, just the word four days, four whole days, for four days, 
or for four whole days? All those are possible answers. Try one of those, okay? Then we have the next one. When is it? It's on late February or early March. If you see February and March are capitalized and there's a period at the end and there is a contraction at the beginning. It is on late February or late March with no contraction, still capitalized. Check on your capital letters, check on your periods. Or your possible answer would be on late February or early March. And the last question is, what is the samba? The samba is a dance. It is a dance or in contraction, it's a dance or the last one would be a dance. Try either or for all these options, okay guys? Let me make it smaller, that way everybody's able to see it. And then click submit and let me know what your result is. Okay, guys, so were you able to go through the exercise? Did it, did it just score a good one now? Or still having difficulties? Coach, my internet, it doesn't work. And I have problems right now. But I will do them, but I have the same as work. Let me send the... If it doesn't work right now, I will say at the end of the class, let me send a screen, um, okay. a screenshot of the answers in case okay. you're not able to do it right now. Okay, let me do it right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Some, some, sometimes because uh, when we were working uh, on it in the breakout room, mm -hmm. uh, I tried several times to, to answer and basically always uh, like, told me that, that, that my answer was wrong but sometimes it's a it's a thing of, of type of typing because mm -hmm. sometimes if you don't end uh, the sentence with a dot it mm -hmm. it shows that like 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 if the answer is is wrong oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah or maybe I don't know some double space some, um, some, some punctuation and space uh, mm -hmm. something yeah you're right a, totally. a little mistake typing uh, mm -hmm. can can be the reason oh, why it shows you the answer is wrong. Yeah. Be sure. I'm yes. not in your WhatsApp group. I don't know why, but I'm not the party like. Can you write to me? Let me give you my personal. Let me text you here my personal. I mean, the, the one that I have there. I'm so going to give you my number from if you want. I think it's it's yeah. easier it's easier if I give you mine. Okay. So I can just share your number once you write to me. Okay. Thanks. To the to English Corporativo, that way they can add you to the group. Uh -huh. Ah, but by the way, there is a link. I think let me get there is a link uh, here. There is a link. Let me share it right now here. For all of you who are not on the WhatsApp group too. There's this link okay. that you receive on the email. By the way, on okay. the link, you whenever you don't take classes, you receive the link to uh, to join the WhatsApp group and also the link to connect you to the playlist. So because every day, as you know, I have at the end of the classes, I have to upload yeah. the videos to YouTube for those of you who were not able to take the class. So okay. you can, okay, good. So this is like for, um, this is for WhatsApp, and this is the one for the playlist. That's for you. Okay, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Super. Okay, so 
going back to the exercise, were you I were you guys able to write down the answers? Or are you still having are you still having problems right now? I'm still having problems. Which Everything one are you? Is wrong. And you tried all of these answers, all of them. Yeah. And no, are you uh, sure all... you remember? Capital letters, if you're using contractions, the space is very important. And one of the things that I noticed is that if you try many times, I'm sorry, if you try many times during the day, it could be that the platform blocks you and it's not allowing you to do it. So if you have done it today for many times, just wait for tomorrow and try it again. I already oh, sent okay. the print screen, okay? Because that would happen, okay, okay. it gets blocked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I resolve that with a point to the end of the sentence. Super. And yes. also remember, huh? like a period, a period at the end of the sentence is very important. Sorry, it's key. Need, need the, the sentence and need the point. By the way, what's the difference between point, period, now that you mentioned it's a very good one, period and dot. Point, it's for um. numbers, okay. Like $1.5 million, for example, whenever you're talking about math and numbers. Period is everything that has to do with English and grammar. Like in Spanish, it's punto final y punto seguido. So in English, it's just period. Um, dot is for internet, dot com, dot net, dot edu, dot sv, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between one and another. Okay, thank you. Punto final? Full stop. Well, actually, in English, it all depends. It can be full stop. Full stop. Full stop. Yeah, it's full stop. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Do you guys have any other questions regarding the platform and this exercise? Were you able to go through? If you didn't, try with a dot, like we were saying, with a period, not a dot, with a period. Try with um, capital letters if you're using contractions. The space is very important. Sometimes we leave double space and it doesn't take it. Or if not, just give yourself a break, log off tonight and try to do it tomorrow. That way you can, you can actually try fresh tomorrow and it should be, and it should allow you to do it, okay? Okay, guys, any okay. other questions right now? Is that no questions with this? For the no, moment? No? Okay, right. super. Uh -huh. Clear uh -huh. as water or clear as horchata? I hope. As no, clear as as water. Water. <laughs> okay, I hope you learned a lot from carnival today. It was really interesting to know where it comes from and a different, some of the carnivals that we have. And now it's time to transition to another topic before I let you go. And that topic is weddings, wedding traditions in countries around the world. But let's start with El Salvador. What are some of the traditions that we do that maybe they're not as common in other countries? Can you mention some of the, those traditions that we have here in the country? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me? Traditions for wedding days, huh? I don't know if, if, if it's something I like uh, originary or, or from El Salvador culture, but I, I, I hear before that uh, the maid has to wear in the date of, of, the, of the wedding uh, something borrow and something, uh, I don't know, Stolen. It is like three, 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 three to five, uh, uh, yeah, three to five items, uh, but, but each one ha has to be a different attribute or condition. Uh, one has to be like uh, robbed and I don't know, something like, like that. But, but, I, but, I, but I, don't, I don't know if, if it's something uh, from it here. Be. It could be. I, it could be, it's like throwing, it's like throwing rice and beans at the, at the entrance when they're married. Like, because for us it's casamiento, but in other countries, casamiento, it's something else, right? Like, I don't yeah. know, gallo pinto in maybe Honduras, I think, or Nicaragua. And it's not casamiento, but we do it because 
we call it casamiento because they're getting married. So that's a tradition here. In other places, they throw bubbles or, or um, I don't know, uh, what else? Flowers, you know, and seeds. And I don't know, but we do rice and beans. That's another tradition. What you just said is also another tradition. Okay, any other tradition that you can think of? Like in the countryside, I have but, heard, mm -hmm, tell me. Sorry, but that tradition that throwing uh, rice and beans, it's practically over. Because it's another tradition. Uh, was not, um, was forbidden. <gasps> really? So, so. So ah. a lot of um, wedding that I went, uh -huh, you know, that I have uh, attended. Uh -huh. So uh, the bubbles, no rice and beans because it's a desperdicio, a waste. Uh, the church, <laughs> see the church uh, say that it waste uh, throw rice and beans. So um, interesting. I didn't know that. Now they throw uh, bubbles. Uh-huh. Nice. I didn't know that. And, yes, and totally. now that you say that, um, I remember I Not went really. to, to a wedding, like in the countryside, and the people, they walk from the house of the bride or the bride's house, they walk all the way to the church to attend the wedding. So they don't go by bus, they don't go by car, they have to walk that, I don't remember where, I don't know if it was in Suchitoto, I don't remember, but it was somewhere I went and I'm trying to remember where, but they say that that was a tradition back in the days and that meant, imagine the, the, the girl with the dress, right? So you had to accompany or go along with the bride walking under the hot sun all the way to the church. And it, they said that it was like a demonstration of, of you know, like to make the, the groom wait and, you know, so many other myths. But I don't know if it's a tradition in the countryside. I don't know. What else can you tell me? What other traditions if, do we have You know here? what? I, 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 I hear before uh, why, why, why the reason because of the dish, uh, Casamiento, has that name. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, all the weddings that I've been before, I never saw uh, people like throwing beans, just rice. Just rice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. Just yes, rice. Yes, it's true. <laughs> yes, it's only it's rice. rice. Yes. So no <laughs> beans and rice. Okay. Ooh, I haven't been to a wedding like in the yeah. longest. I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe that's the reason why they get divorced so 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 quickly. So fast. Yeah, that's the reason why <laughs> beans are missing. An important element. <laughs> okay, well, let's go ahead and let's find out um, this. Let's find out about wedding traditions around the world. And we're going to talk about them. Some are very strange. So our traditions are not that strange as the ones around the world. Let's take a look into this one, okay? Can you listen to the video? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I asked because I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Cultures throughout the world have their own unique ideas on how to say I do. We're taking you around the globe to show you how people celebrate their big day. The dollar dance, also known as the money or apron dance. I want to stop there before we go into details. Have you ever been to a wedding where they give money? Or like a bachelor no. or bachelorette party in where they put money to, or, or on a wedding like this? No? Never no, been to never. one? No. Never. Okay. No. Imagine. <laughs> imagine <this laughs> sound, uh -huh, it sounds like a, that type of wedding. Huh, strange, right? <laughs> it's a tradition associated with countries all over, including Poland, Hungary, Nigeria, Philippines, and Mexico. These videos feature a Mexican-American wedding and Mexican-Filipino wedding. Money is tossed, handed, or pinned onto the couple, while different guests take turns dancing with the newlyweds. The money is a great way to help with a little extra financial support and to let them know you wish them a life of prosperity. Life of prosperity. Why not? Jumping the broom refers to a wedding tradition in which a couple literally jumps over a broom. There's a misconception that it began during slavery in the United States, but it originated in Ghana and is still practiced there. The broom holds spiritual value and symbolizes the sweeping away of evils and past wrongs. 
have you ever seen this type of elements used in a wedding celebration, like a broom or something like this? No. Or maybe people, well, I've heard like they don't have to sweep, like that's a myth too, maybe. Like they said, your grandmother would say, my grandmother would say, don't let anybody sweep your feet or if not, you're not going to get married. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I guess it has to do with that, like having your feet mm. swept. Yeah. Today, some African-American couples include it in their ceremony as a tribute to tradition. In Greece, the kumbaro is similar to the best man. On the morning of the wedding, they help the groom prepare for the ceremony by helping them shave and get ready. It's a practice that signifies trust between close friends. This was very interesting. I like this one, like how friends show solidarity on that day. So they help the, the best man. They help the groom get ready by shaving him or shaving his head or getting he, him all dressed up for the wedding, which is very not common because usually it's like with girls, right? Girls help girls. But with guys, it's not that common to see somebody shaving, like your best friend shaving you for before the wedding or something. So I, I felt this was very curious about Greece. It's cute. It's curious tradition, uh huh? Scotland. In the days before the wedding, one or both of the fiancés are taken by their friends and family and covered in various substances like soot, feathers, food, and more. The tradition started as a way to ward off danger from supernatural forces. After being covered up, they're paraded around town while their friends make plenty of noise and make a scene. So imagine this particular tradition. They take the groom and they, they cover him with all unimaginable things, elements, food, raw food, etc. And he has to actually, they go on a parade throughout town for everybody to see and making noise, like if it's the conga bus, right? Like making noise and music and everything to let everybody know that he's the one getting married. And supposedly that takes away the bad spirit or the bad aura from his upcoming marriage. For all to see. China. The Chinese tea ceremony is a wedding tradition that bonds two families together. While kneeling, the couple serves tea to their parents. Traditionally, the couple serves the groom's parents and elders in order of seniority, followed by the bride's family. This serves as a formal introduction to show respect and to express gratitude. One of the things that I do admire about this tradition is that in China and about Chinese, is the ability to be on their knees, right? Mm -hmm. On their knees for a very long period of time. Geishas or, or anybody who's Chinese, they have this very big ability of being on their knees while taking, you know, taking their food, watching a, a TV show, or just having a regular conversation or even working like that. They have this very big ability of spending many hours like that, right? In return, the couple usually receives lucky red envelopes with money or jewelry. Interesting. India. In this pre-wedding ritual, oh. turmeric paste is rubbed onto the couple's skin by friends and family. In India, turmeric can signify a lot of things, including purity, fertility, and good health. The paste also gives the couple a nice glow for their big day. The ceremony is usually accompanied by traditional song and dance and is supposed to ease nerves. You know how it, you know how in India they use a lot of condiments, right? This is like a special mustard kind of mix, and that's what they they do with they fill them up with mustard because they use a lot of condiments, and I guess that brings prosperity to them based on their beliefs, of course. <laughs> this German tradition has guests smashing porcelain before the wedding to wish the couple luck in their married life. The couple is responsible for cleaning up the shards to symbolize teamwork. The more shards of broken dishes, the better the luck the couple will have. Imagine this in Germany. So they take out all, all their plates, their fancy plates, right? And they just break them. And then the couple has to pick them up. 
and that's one of the traditions prior to because they have like a pre-wedding celebration always like in the majority of countries they always have pre-wedding celebrations with friends with family and the rehearsals and it's always a celebration prior to weddings so i i really enjoyed and i hope you guys enjoyed uh, checking out all these traditions these wedding traditions and you learned a little bit about them today as well as carnivals and thank you so much for another week um i will see you next week next monday okay here at the same time in the same place okay guys thank you very much have a wonderful night okay thank you bye, bye. So much. Bye. thank you bye bye, bye. 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 good night <laughs>